Hi. <laughs> Rod and Kimberly Olson here, and we're sharing our session of this next section of How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci. And I love the quote that we started off with this session of reading, I wish to work miracles, Leonardo da Vinci. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever applied for a job or written a resume? Because Leonardo da Vinci went about it a little bit differently than most people do, didn't he? See, most people, when they apply for a job or some work, they list their past experiences and what Leonardo did, it's pretty amazing actually, what he did is he actually had thought long and hard about what exactly the person he wanted to work for and would, would need. And so what he did is he actually listed everything that he would be able to do for him. Um, his name was uh, Ludovico Sforza, uh, who was the region of Milan. And just a couple things uh, I thought was quite of interesting. He said, I have plans for bridges, very light and strong and suitable for carrying very easily. Um, another thing is uh, he'd mentioned that he could find a way that would allow uh, men to be able to travel under the river uh, unnoticed and unheard of. And just a lot of different things. Obviously, we take advantage, you know, um, the, the, we know that are possible now, but back in his day, these types of things were not known how to do. And so what he had done is he was a forward thinker. He'd actually went and he'd actually you know, found out exactly all the information that he needed about his employer, the person he wanted to work for. And uh, you know, he went in and basically decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually tell you what I will do for you and why you should hire me. So it's very, you know, very different. Very different. Um, thinking about, you know, he didn't, like, like Ron mentioned, he didn't talk about what he did in the past. He talked about what his skills are now and how it applies. So, you know, maybe the next time that uh, you're seeking uh, a, an, a, either to be an apprentice or to um, your next job, for those of you that, that still believe in that <laughs> for your income or still need that for your income, because that's, that's, you know, very real for people today. Think about how you, what skills you have to bring to the table. Now, some interesting, some interesting facts about Leonardo da Vinci that that uh, really were quirks that could have changed his his entire future. One was that his both his father and his grandfather were accountants, and you know naturally in that day and age, it would be the child would follow in the footsteps of the the father. But uh, Leonardo was born out of wedlock. And so they would not let him into the guild of notaries and of, for the accountants. So he was not able to follow in their footsteps. Now, he could have been the greatest accountant of all time, but instead he was sent to study um, painting and sculpting uh, with Verrocchio. And it's interesting because when you become an apprentice back then, uh, it was not uncommon for someone to to complete and help the, the main, the master, if you will, uh, to finish his work. So once he started a painting, the students, the apprentices, would come in and help finish that painting. Well, they took a painting that he helped on, um, and, and they ran it under x-ray. And they said, you could tell exactly which pieces Leonardo da Vinci did, because you could not see his brush strokes. He was such a perfectionist at mixing the paint and making the, the brush strokes. And this was when he was apprentice. This is when he was starting out. But he was such a perfectionist, you couldn't even see his brush strokes under an x-ray, which hadn't been invented at the time, obviously. But you could do that. And, and, and he did so, you know, he had so many amazing talents. And you know, it talks about as, as a young man, he was very happy-go-lucky, light-hearted. It says, you can imagine Leonardo in his late teens and early 20s strolling the streets of Florence in his silk leggings, his long auburn blonde curls cascading over the shoulders of his rose-colored velvet tunic. You know, he was very aware of what he wore and he loved the feel of fine materials on his skin and stuff. But something happened to him, once again, kind of a quirk or twist of fate that Maybe changed his outlook just a bit, didn't it? Yeah, he was actually put in prison for a capital crime. Someone accused him of something, and uh, he was later released um, because there was lack of evidence. But you know, it, like Kimberly said, it did change his outlook, and uh, he wasn't such a happy-go-lucky guy after that. He actually ended up leaving Florence because of it. Um, 
and uh, you know it just kind of changes his outlook on life because of the time he spent in prison. Yes, and he, and it, he didn't even you know care to see animals caged after that point. Um, but it, after this, he went on to create some of the greatest masterpieces, like the Last Supper. You know it, that what a tremendous painting that he painted, and that moment when you know Jesus realized, or when he announced. That he was that someone at that table would betray him. That was the moment he was portraying in the Last Supper. Just an amazing artistry that that he portrayed there, and you know everything geometrically proportionate. Just it, it's astounding his capacity to to bring into a portrayal moments of such emotion. And you know he had another great work of art that was unfortunately destroyed and he never got to actually finish it. It would have been one of the greatest masterpieces of all time. He was sculpt he was going to be sculpting a horse and at the top of the horse would have been a rider. Um, but the horse that he prepared, just the model of it was 24 feet high, the wooden um, model. And what happened to that? Got destroyed actually. Some archers. The um, French. The French destroyed it. You know, and that, that's actually one of the things that he had mentioned when we talked about the resume when he was actually applying for the job is that he could actually build that uh, in bronze and encase it in bronze and uh, it's one of the reasons why he got the job. Uh, unfortunately, like Kimberly said, the, the French uh, ended up destroying it. And um, the reason it was never actually put into bronze is because it would have required more than 80 tons of melted bronze to complete that project. It would have been a massive undertaking to actually complete that full entire thing. But you know, this was a part of Leonardo's life when he traveled. You know, he, he traveled with an art with one of the armies uh, of Bo Caesar Borgia. He made over six maps, you know, precise maps of Italy. And, you know, without the tools that we have of our day, his, his maps were surprisingly accurate. And it was just a period of his life where he traveled and he met a lot of people and at the end of, of working for Borgia, you know, that's when he went to, to live with Machiavelli and spend some time there. So, you know, that's where, where we're at today um, with learning about Leonardo and some of the interesting facts about his life. But the thing that's most important that you can take away today is that always be forward thinking. Be aware of what your skills are. Be open to things that you're good at because you can expand upon them. One of, that kind of brings me to a point. Actually, we were actually listening to a, 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 actually one of our millionaire mentors this evening was talking about that. Actually, because we all have kings and queens in our lives, people that we look up to, people that we have that maybe have the skills that we'd like to uh, attain for ourselves, and we know that if we can just get in their presence and learn from them, that it's that we will rub off, off, you know, rub off, rub off <laughs> on us. And so, uh, one of the ways that you can do that is just you know, become a servant, become a servant leader, find out what you can do and learn about that person and find out what they need. Kings and queens don't have everything, they need something. And so if you can learn that and, um, you know, put that out there, that, you know, become a servant, then, uh, you know, it's a great way to be able to um, to show exactly, you know, what, what kind of things that you can do for that individual. And increase your skills and be an apprentice to that person. And always remember, too, that your mentors don't have to be living. I mean, we're learning, and, and Leonardo da Vinci is my mentor. I'm his apprentice. I'm learning how he thought. I'm learning the ways his brain ticked. Not that we can ever fully understand that. But, you know, we study Napoleon Hill. Uh, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah. We Wallace guess, D. Waddles. Wallace Waddles. Yeah, science you know. of Getting Rich. A lot of a lot of great people. Robert Jim Kiyosaki. Rohn has passed on. Robert Kiyosaki's still, He's still here. Yeah. But um, a lot of great great mentors that have passed on that are our mentors, and we get to be their apprentices and learn to them because of the written word and what was left to us. And so just just remember in closing today that follow along this journey with us, and learn how to be a forward thinking Renaissance man or woman of of your time in this modern age. And when you wake up, wake up unstoppable.